Hello everyone and welcome to this first intro of a PVM series I'm trying to make. Uh, first of all, uh, let's explain a bit on why I'm doing this and why am I doing this. So, uh, the way it works is I am doing this because I noticed most of the PVM guides out there and most of the PVM settings for Runscape is uh, high level based. So they're like, yeah, for this boss just uh, spend a hundred couple billion and get your best in slot tiers and just do it. Plus, most of the time it's like, yeah, you know it, you just need to do these seven things and it's like, what the hell are those things? So, I wanted to make a guide, a series, a video series about uh, PVM, but focused for lower level players, for players who are starting with it and for players who are uh, joining the game and uh, thinking of joining the game to get a bit into this obviously there are more efficient ways to do this but uh, they will be uh, covered more in detail and they are covered by a lot of streamers a lot of youtubers out there so go check them out also this is a long series it will be split into two parts mainly. The first part will be explaining the mechanics behind PUVM, what it is, what do you need, how combat works, different things about the system and the game. And the second part will be, uh, I will be covering every single boss in the game. Hopefully I will be able to cover some bosses that I still do not have the expertise on to cover by the time we reach there. But I will try to be uploading at least one video of each part a week and we'll get on without further ado let's go let's do this i hope you guys like it leave your comments there follow me i stream on facebook or twitch uh, i uh, do a lot of things i play runescape a lot so anything you want anything question anything related just give me a heads up uh, my tag my runescape name is the same as my Yarmir tag so I will be easy to find and let's get on to it so first of all what is pvm what is this core aspect of the game what is this important thing well pvm is the art of killing monsters and it's usually referred to high level high rewarding monsters also called bossing or bosses uh, pvm actually refers to anything that you any monster that you can kill in any game so it's not a runescape exclusive uh, term but in runescape it's used mostly for bossing the art of killing them and getting some loot so why do you want to do pvm well first of all there are over 41 different bosses in the game everyone with their own mechanics with their own special attacks with their own abilities tricks tips way to kill them and every one of them is different most of the fights have some sort of a special thing to them that makes them unique there are some that quite are quite simple and some that become really really simple the higher level that you are but every single boss has its own thing so they are unique fights they are unique piece of content that you can enjoy most of them solo or in a group so there are some limited you can only do this in solo or you can only do this in a group but most of them can be done either yourself or with someone else now why would you want to participate in these fights if you are hard cold cash based player well loot and glory some of the best drops of the game some of the best items in the game are obtained via pvm and there are some things that are the best way to get them uh, pvm is also also the best money maker in the game so the best way to get money in runescape for leveling up your skills or for doing anything it's just go and kill bosses it's the best the fastest way to get money it has always been like that and it will probably always be like that and uh, the last part that bosses get you are pets and titles every single boss has a pet a little companion that you can take that's exactly like the boss and you can take it out and follow you around and you probably have seen people with boss pets already around and if you get every single drop you get a title you get a unique title for your character like you could be uh, Sarah Makaro the um, Shackled or Sarah Makaro the Ferocious or the Araxite or there are a lot of titles to get also uh, you can get a final boss and insane final boss titles that are some of the hardest titles to come by so it should be rewarding it should be fun 
tidy end of it. So we're going to talk about a bit about the basics here in this video. And the first thing I want to show and the first thing I want to talk is the interface. As you probably know by now, RuneScape's interface is highly customizable. It's highly changeable. You can choose which windows to show, which windows to don't show, which to have, what to not have. So what I'm focusing in this video is the introduction and having to know what to have on screen right now. So what do you want to have on the screen? Well, you want to have your equipment, your minimap, your inventory, your action bars, your familiar interface, your buff and the buff bars. And that's the bare minimum. You can have skills, you can have prayers, you can have a lot of things, but this is the minimum I suggest having. So we're gonna explain a bit about everything. First of all, we're gonna explain right here about buff and the buff bar and the buff and the buff bars are uh, the places where you can see the current status of your character uh, positive and negative so it should help a lot there are a lot of mechanics involved so bosses certainly stun you before using a special attack or they bleed you or they do a lot of things so we have to keep an eye on the buffs and the buffs most of the time you're going to be using potions too so whenever you're using a potion you need to check your timers for the potion because it can run out and it can be troublesome right so uh let's get on to it first of all inventory equipment minimap and familiars inventory or familiars interface so uh, why do you need to check this out? We're going to start with the most basic ones, inventory and the familiar interface. Both of them work the same way. If you have a summoning familiar that can carry items for you, you will need to see the, their inventory. Even though you can use food and you can use items from the action bar, so you do not have to click on the items itself. Uh, you can still need to see it. I mean, it has happened. You can run out of food or you can uh, leave loot on the ground dropped for it to waste because your inventory was full and you didn't notice. So an important thing to note is to always have visible your inventory on screen. And the same happens about equipment. You can uh, switching weapons, switching equipment mid fight is really important in drone escape, especially in high level in end game bosses. So you're gonna have to uh, keep track of everything that's happening with your character. So that's the importance of having equipment. Uh, that's important of having uh, the equipment, the minimap, the inventory to keep track of everything that's going around you uh, and everything that's happening around you. So uh, now for action bars, action bars are a little bit trickier. They can be customizable and most things can be dropped on them, uh, dragged on them so that you can use them with the press of a key and we're gonna do a video a full video later on on the guide about how to configure an action bar and how my action bars are set up but this mostly reduces to whatever you're comfortable with something i would recommend highly is saving the first six action bars for different combat styles and using the last seven action bars for uh, different strategies i personally have four generic action bars that go from action bar 7 through 10, six action bars, one for each combat style, uh, I mean melee dual wield, melee two-handed, range dual wield, range two-handed, and I have the last three action bars, I use them for AFK, and so whenever I am slaying on the phone and I don't want to be pressing abilities every time, I just use those bars, but you can configure them whatever you want, the point is being comfortable, and you do not need to have five action bars on you at the same time, that is too much. However, I would say the bare minimum to be efficient and to do bossing nicely would be having two or three bars at the same time on the screen. So uh, we'll go in further detail further on. So uh, at first it looks scary, but believe me, once you practice enough, once you have enough practice with it, it will become second hand, it will become really easy to pull off, really easy to show off. So this was a little basic, what you have on the screen, get ready because next time we're gonna tackle the combat basics. And as I said before, this guide is focused for players who are new. I want to tackle everything 
from the combat spectrum in the game in this series and I will be uploading it in different order I mean the combat basics will be in order but the bosses can be in different order so if you want to see some uh, particular boss or if you want to see some special boss coming first you can do you can request for it and I will try to do it as soon as possible I mean right now I'm starting with the low tier bosses the first bosses of the game but I'm probably skipping towards Elite Dungeons, Rex Matrix, maybe Raksha so that you can uh, pull it off so next time we're going to be talking about combat basics i hope you guys enjoy this guide i hope you guys feel like it's gonna work that it's gonna function and as always see you next time